Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a book haul of the books that I've bought so far in March. It's currently March 16th, so the month's not over yet. I could get more. I actually do have more coming. I made an order on Book Depository last night. Um, probably not sound judgment, but it happened and I'm happy about it still. <laughs> Um, I found a new bookstore this month, a secondhand bookstore in my area. Well, really the only one in my area because we have one Barnes & Noble within a 90 mile radius. I found this secondhand bookstore near the house of a girl I babysit and I've gone back twice. So let's just get started. The first book that I picked up is Bunny. I feel like this book kind of went viral last year. I didn't really pay it much attention because it didn't really seem like my genre. I was super just into romance at that time. I was just getting back into reading, but it's supposed to be a thriller. It's supposed to be really weird um, psychological thriller, but just also unhinged and all over the place and very strange. And that sounded really fun to me. And it was only $7, which was really nice. And originally it's 17 and I've seen this at Barnes & Noble for full price, so I think this was a good find. The next couple books that I picked up were two NYRBs. I really love NYRB's cover design. They always have these squares with the title and the author name, and these really beautiful, just like solid spines with the NYRB right here. Sometimes it's it's usually this way, but if it's a thin book, then it'll go up and down, or maybe vice versa. I don't really know. Yeah, I think it's usually horizontal. Um, but I really liked Stoner by John Williams, which was my first NYRB read. And NYRB is just a really cool publishing house because they have this initiative to publish forgotten gems of classics or to translate classics from other languages to English. So these two are both um, originally written in English, but they sounded really good. Um, and NYRBs are also very expensive, so when I saw them at this bookstore and I got it for $8, <laughs> I was pretty hyped. Like, it's $16.95, which I guess is kind of the same price as a regular paperback, but it's hard to find them, so I usually have to order an NYRB from their website, which is a lot more expensive because of shipping. So, and then this one I got for $7. It was originally $15. But I'm super excited to read this one. It's called Talk by Linda Rosencrantz. So basically the author went around the beach in 1968 with a tape recorder in her pocket and decided to just record all of her conversations with her friends without anybody's permission and just bottled up all of these conversations into a few characters in her book. So um, if she talked to like 10, 20, or 30 people, it doesn't matter. All the dialogue just got condensed into the dialogue of these three or four characters in her book. And it's just kind of about 20-somethings, the gossip of the age in 1968, and it's... I read this one Goodreads review that said it, would, it felt like a time capsule for that period, which sounded really fun because it's not like a story really, it's just all of their conversations. And it's written really cool. Um, it's kind of like a play, how the entire thing is just dialogue. Um, that's how the whole book is written. So here's a couple pages, what does that say? Emily and Marsha react to an attack on Vincent. Yes, those are some of the characters. It's Emily, Marsha, Vincent, and it's either just those three or there's a fourth. Yeah, it's just those three. So I'm super excited to read this. And then this second book, The Cost of Living by Mavis Gallant, is a collection of short stories. I read a little bit of the first story when I was in the bookstore called Madeline's Birthday. And it was basically starting out with a mother who forgot it was her daughter's birthday and their whole relationship is kind of just a reflection of that one fact and that like the mom is kind of self-absorbed and in her own world and the daughter i think she is too i don't really remember that much because i bought this at the beginning of the month and i haven't opened it up since but maybe if i read this at the, by the end of the month i'll have some more thoughts to give you about it the next two books that I bought were books that I actually was assigned to read in high school. That's why I bought them, because I recognized them. I'd already been wanting to buy this. Um, this is Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. I was on the lookout for this book because I enjoyed it in high school, but I thought I would really enjoy it even more now. 
So when I saw it there, I was like, oh, perfect. It was $6 for this, the beautiful like edition that you always see. Um, this is the cover that I wanted. And I love that the edges are kind of these um, imperfect sort of soft cut edges. I don't know how to really describe them, but they feel like fabric. It's I love the paper in this. And that second book I got is Grendel by John Gardner. Grendel is about Grendel, which is who is the monster antagonist in the epic poem Beowulf. I also had to read Beowulf in high school, but I don't really remember a lot of that either. I just know that it was like a bunch of guys who were going to a tavern every night and every night this monster was eating people. So Grendel is about the monster's perspective and kind of just lamentations on life or maybe lamentations aren't isn't the right word, but just like contemplating life and what makes him the monster, what makes him the villain in this story, and how the men kind of find their own heroism and their purpose out of him, like he's giving that to them. Which also, I feel like these two kind of go hand in hand. I hope I'm remembering these books well, because if not, then this is a bunch of kapua, kapula, kapui. But both of these books are kind of about how the main character, um, people use them to get their own purpose out of them. Like in this book, our main character, um, she's very beautiful and she has multiple husbands at different times in her life and all of her husbands seem to find their like sense of self through the fact that they have a beautiful wife, that they are the one who got her. And this is about how the men find their heroism because they are fighting him and he's a monster because they say he's a monster because he looks different. Um, so I'm just really excited to read both of these. They were both really beautiful. When I did read them in high school, I just don't remember very much of it, but I'm very excited to get back into them. And they're just really gorgeous books as well. The next couple books I bought are from Target and I got them for really great deals. I got them for both 30% off. They had both been on my radar. And they're both memoirs, which I don't really read many rem memoirs. I don't think I've ever read a memoir, if not just like for school. Uh, the first one is I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. Take a look at that cover. Um, I really love this cover design, like the bright yellow and the bright pink and the old timey kind of like, I don't know, 60s or 70s feel. I love that they like wrote all this information at the bottom, like a classic old book would do. I have been wanting to read this book for a hot minute. <laughs> it was just a matter of like when I was going to get it. I wasn't sure if I wanted to get the actual book or just listen to the audiobook because it was narrated by Jeanette McCurdy herself or if I wanted to get an ebook. Um, and when I saw it for 30% off because it's been 20% off for a while, when it hit 30, I was like, okay, I think I need to do it. <laughs> so I got it and I had accidentally not canceled my Audible subscription. So I had a credit lying around. So I decided to get the audiobook with it and I kind of, I listened along while I read and that was such a great experience. This book was a whirlwind. I really highly recommend it. I know this is like my book haul, but I already read it. And I read it in a day and a half. The way that Jeanette McCurdy writes is just so witty and concise. She's a really great storyteller. Like she was an actress. I guess that goes hand in hand together. And it was just really great. I'll talk about it more in my wrap up at the end of this month, but it was a beautiful book. Um, very sad book, but beautiful. I'm happy to say that whatever else she releases next, I will be reading. So the second memoir I picked up was Finding Me by Viola Davis. I love Viola Davis. I, maybe I'm a fake fan because I haven't finished How to Get Away with Murder, um, but I was really into it for a little bit. And part of it is because Viola Davis is just a queen. I really love her acting. I think she's, just a very powerful woman. I was going to read you the first page, well, the first line because it was so funny, but I don't know if I can leave it in this video. So I'm going to suggest you look up the ebook and read the sample because the first line is just hilarious. Now, moving on to the final four books, which I actually bought today at Barnes and Noble, specifically some Penguin Classics, the older edition, because there's a new Penguin Classic. Um, design that I'm not crazy about. This one is the older edition. It has the orange circle around the penguin and the orange circle around the penguin here. 
um, and the font for the author's name is in orange, whereas the new ones, they don't have this orange circle. It's a little bit thicker of a white strip and all of this text is in white and it's a different font that I really don't like. <laughs> I think it looks kind of bulky and, I don't know, kind of just... It's giving Calibri. <laughs> it's giving Comic Sans. Um, not literally Comic Sans, but it's just, I think this just looks so sleek and classy. Um, and the new design doesn't really look the same way. So I guess we can just start with this one. This is called This Way for the Gas, Ladies and Gentlemen by Tadeusz Borowski. Um, this cover was really beautiful. I love the colors in it. And this is basically the story of a man who was in a World War II concentration camp and just life there. Prisoners eat, work, sleep, and fall in love a few yards from where other prisoners are systematically slaughtered. Um, this sounds like a very sad read, but it was also one of the shorter classics that I found, or just shorter Penguin classics specifically, because I was just kind of scouring through the Barnes & Noble rows of the fiction section, just looking for that little orange penguin, because I wanted some beautiful books, and also I trust Penguin quite a lot, kind of. The way that I feel about um, NYRB, how I trust them, that I know that the books that they're publishing, I'm most likely going to enjoy. Um, or at least appreciate in some way. There's only, these are really the only two publishers I feel that way about, Penguin and NYRB. So I figured this would be good. Also just the title, This Way for the Gas, ladies and gentlemen. Like, <laughs> um, what a title. So I had, I just have a feeling I'm going to enjoy this author's writing. The second book that I picked up today is the Book of Sand and Shakespeare's Memory by George Louis Borges, or Jorge Luis Borges. I'm not quite sure. But this cover was also just beautiful with these yellow butterflies kind of condensing on top and spreading out and having these gorgeous details at the bottom and this flaky, I don't really know, stringy design there. Um, this was just so pretty. And this book, I don't even remember what it's about. Uh, it's two books. It's The Book of Sand, of course, and Shakespeare's Memory. So they're two separate works by Borges and they were put together. Um, and I think there's other short stories in here. I really don't know much about it, but it's supposed to be very fantastic, just kind of weird and imaginative. I don't know if it's magical realism is what it means by being very fantastic, but it says that one of the stories is about an infinite book, a one-sided mirror, a golden mask, a scholar who mysteriously acquires Shakespeare's memory. This hypnotic collection is the capstone to an August literary life. Um, this just sounded really fun and it was a beautiful cover and it was a short classic. Basically my strategy to try to get into reading more classics is to just start with these little baby ones. The Well, I shouldn't call them baby ones. Um, just these like shorter ones that are less than 200 pages so it doesn't feel so intimidating. I'm really excited for both of these and they're just stunning side by side, stacked together. So the fourth Penguin book I picked up is uh, Nana by Emily Zola or Emile Zola. Um, this book is about a prostitute who is like the prostitute. She's like, everybody loves her. She's the it girl. Men are killing themselves over her, all falling over her feet. They are in love with her. Women emulate her. She lives this really extravagant life of luxury and debauchery. It says, the rich atmosphere and luminous language of this poem of male desire transform Nana into an almost mythical creature, a destructive force preying on a corrupt, decaying society. Zola was born in 1840, and so this book came out sometime after that. Um, her slightest movement fanned the flame of desire, and with the twitch of her little finger, she could stir men's flesh. I thought this cover was also very pretty. Um, oh, part of my reasoning for my choices that I made with these books was this one was $14, but it had a little bit of a dent in the back, so I got a little discount for it. It's 15% off. Usually they give you 10% off for like dings on books in Barnes & Noble. If you didn't know, now you know. Please use that. <laughs> Just tell them like when you're buying the book, like, hey, it's a little bit damaged. Do you do any discounts for this? And they'll usually give you 10% off. And I'm a Barnes & Noble member, so I got an additional 10% off. And coincidentally, the day 
today that I was there, the person who was ringing me up was like, I'm actually quitting. So I'll just give you my 15% like employee discount. Cause what are they going to do? Fire me. <laughs> so he gave me 15% plus my 10%. So I got this 25% off of the $14. So that was awesome. This final book I got was 10 bucks though, which is why I picked it up. But then I read the back and I was like, actually, this sounds really fun. And, um, this is the only one that I've started. I started it today. I read part of the introduction and then I decided to stop because honestly, the guy who was writing the introduction was like so mean. <laughs> he was so negative. He was just talking about how horrible of an author this author is. So the book is, sorry, the book is called Winnesburg, Ohio or Winesburg, Ohio by Sherwood Anderson. And the introduction is by Malcolm Cowley. Like, at some point, Anderson describes himself as saying, one thing I've always known instinctively, that's how to handle people. Make them do as I please. Be what I wanted them to be. I was in business for a long time, and the truth is, I was a smooth son of a B-word. And so then Kelly goes on to say, he never learned to handle words in that smooth fashion. Like, was that roast necessary? I literally wrote that in the margin. Like, was that roast necessary? <laughs> I only got six pages in and then he said he was about to spoil something. I underlined spoil and I was like, yeah, okay, I can't read any more of this. Why publish a book with the introduction telling the reader how terrible of a writer this person is? There is some already like beautiful parts of it that I liked. Also check out my bookmark, super cute. I love these bookmarks that are from Barnes & Noble because they, they have the ruler on the back and it's great for, I like to make straight lines when I annotate. Um, I actually just bought a pack of pens today as well. The Paper, Men, Paper Mate Gel Pen Rainbow Pack with 0.7 mm. They write very nicely. So I've been annotating this book. I just got into it, um, but I'm excited. It's Oh, I haven't even told you what it's about. It's basically about a reporter who interviews some people who live in Winnesburg, Ohio. They confide their hopes, their dreams, and their fears. Um, and he kind of just tells these stories of people that probably would not be told. The description um, is not super descriptive. An extraordinarily good book, Rebecca West says. Yeah, so we'll see if Callie was right to be super harsh. Um, about Anderson when I finish this because this is the only book out of them all that I am currently actually reading. Um, the rest of them, I'll get to it when I get to it because <laughs> I'm also in the middle of a reread of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I want to start reading The Wind of the Willows because I want to start reading some children's classics to also be as like a little stepping stool into other classics I want to read. Um, Am I reading anything else? I was reading A Court of Silver Flames. I only got like 100 pages into that and that's like a 700 page book. <laughs> so I'm like 100 pages in and I just wasn't really feeling it right now. Like my mood was just elsewhere. So I like picked up Harry Potter and I have this now. Maybe I'll get back to that. But yeah, that was everything. I think it was everything. Did I hit all the penguins? Yes, I did. So these are all the penguins looking stunning next to each other with that little bookmark dangling off the edge. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> These are all the books that I bought this month. Gosh, it looks humongous. I'm so excited and so happy to have these books. Um, hopefully you'll see some of them in my March wrap up. We'll see. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it and feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see more content by me. And I hope you have a really good day. Okay. See ya.